Say hello to our good friend, Congressman Ron Estes from the 4th Congressional District in Kansas. Congressman, hope you're doing well today. I'm doing well, Todd, and thank you for letting me be on and talk to you today. So, Congressman, before we jump into all of this um, with uh, your your great op-ed in National Review, the debate is tomorrow night. What do you want to What do you want to hear from President Trump? You know, I I think one of the important things that we're going to see in a debate uh, this election cycle that is different than four years ago is is each President Biden and President Trump will bring their records to the plate. And and we'll see what uh, four years of President Trump produced and and, you know, the, the increase in jobs and increase in, in uh, uh, economic growth and, and reduction in, in uh, regulations versus what we've seen out of President Biden of increasing inflation and the burden on everybody and and the lack of secure borders and and uh, just all the trouble and the problems that have been caused uh, with the regulatory environment that President Biden's done. And I think it's going to be a very different uh, contrasting appearances between the two. And I think it's really going to stand out, uh, you know, that Americans were better off four years ago than they are today. Who do you like as VP? Uh, Folks have been talking about Nikki Haley and uh, that wealthy donors are trying to get her on the ticket. Do you do you have somebody that that you think the president uh, ought to pick? Well, you know, there's there's a lot of good Republicans to pick from. I, I'll, I'll tell you the, the the pick that I and it, it's kind of a sentimental favorite is uh, you know my predecessor uh, Mike Pompeo, who was uh, you know he, he was a congressman here in, in the fourth congressional district before I had this seat, and then went on to have uh, great services uh, as CIA director and, and Secretary of State. I think he would be a great vice president as well. Mike, Pom- all right, we've got you down for Pompeo, so that'll that'll go well in the fourth congressional district. I have no doubt about that. And and actually, right. I think I mean he's look, he's got the resume to be a VP. He's got a resume to be a president. He certainly does. He's, I mean, he's done so much good service for the country. I mean, in the army and then and then in the private sector and 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 then back in in Congress and. And, uh, you know, in the State Department. And, and so, uh, you know, Mike, Mike and Susan are friends and uh, they're just great people. And uh, I, I would I would heartily endorse them as uh, uh, being the VP for for President Trump. All right. Uh, Congressman, yesterday I was running around. I didn't have a chance to grab lunch. So I had something ordered, sent over to the studio. It was Chick-fil-A, 12 piece nuggets, a little thing of the mac and cheese and one of their delicious and refreshing berry drinks. It was over thirty dollars, Congressman. Over thirty dollars, and I'm I'm wondering, and was I a victim yesterday of Bidenomics? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, President Biden brags about Bidenomics, but you know the American people see Bidenomics as the pain and suffering that they're they're inflicted on them. You know, you look at uh, uh, prices on average have gone up twenty percent. Uh, since President Biden came into office, and it's even worse on the day-to-day things, the things when you go to the grocery store, when you go to the gas pump, or when you go to a restaurant, and 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 it's it's the pain and suffering that people are feeling. We're we're seeing it when we do polling with folks that that uh, you know the the economy and inflation is just uh, a burden of on them, and and it's cumulative. The Biden administration is trying to say, oh well, inflation is down year over year from from what it was a year ago. But the problem is it just means it's a, it's less of a burden that's being added over the past year on top of the big burden that was already been added on in the year before and the year before that. So I'm just curious, Congressman, there in Kansas, I mean, I know you've run the numbers and you mentioned this in your piece. I mean, how much are the average on average, how much are Kansans paying more each each month since uh, 2021? Yeah, I mean, the, the Joint Economic Committee here from Congress has estimated uh, that Kansans are paying a thousand dollars or more per month for the exact same groceries, the exact same gas, the exact same um, apartment or house that they live in. And uh, you know, since since President Biden came into office, that's cumulative added up to about over twenty five thousand dollars more that they've had to pay out. And and it's just a burden that people people can't they can't. You know, they have to make those tough decisions between groceries and, and going to the doctor or, or uh, you know, getting, getting clothes for your kids to go back to school. And, and those, are, those are the issues that, that affect everyday people in their pocketbook. 
Congressman, so let's say Trump gets elected. Uh, how quickly will we see inflation come down and uh, the prices go down? You know, I, I think part of the problem is is President Biden's uh, set so many bad things in place. So it's going to take time to unwind some of those. Uh, uh, some of it's driven off of just pure spending. And obviously we can we can focus on that when the, when the government goes out and and spends all this money, uh, then it actually it drives up demand for, you know, the goods and services that are out there. So it, it raises prices. But some of the regulatory burden that uh, President Biden's put in place, President Trump and, and uh, you know, the House and the Senate are going to have to unwind, put on the energy uh, economy uh, for the United States. Everybody is affected by the price of gas. And it's higher now, and it has consistently been higher since President Biden went into office because he, he literally went out and attacked American energy independence. And and so it shows up in the cost of food. It shows up in the cost of everyday goods, You know whether you're buying furniture or other things. Uh, and so uh, that takes time to start back up that, that great American energy uh, independence that we had prior to President Biden coming into office. So there's there's a lot of work that we're going to have to do, and, and uh, some of it will be short-term, some of it will take a little bit longer. I thought it was interesting, and going back to um, the, the day, I think this was what a couple of months ago, I think in April, when uh, Secretary Janet Yellen was appearing before uh, Ways and Means, and you asked her a very important question about inflation. What, what did you ask her, Congressman? Yeah, it, it really— it highlights their lack of understanding of the impact. When they talk, brag about Bidenomics and brag about what they've done, you know, back in 2021, when when the Biden administration was starting to get warnings, not just from Republicans, but Democratic economists, too, that inflation was going to be a problem, the, the buzz line from the Biden administration was, oh, it's transitory. And so I, I asked Secretary Yellen about, I mean, why did you use that word transitory? And, and uh, you know, now that we've had three years of, of much higher inflation, you know, what word would you have used instead of transitory? And she really couldn't come up with a word. And, and so I, I tried to prompt her a little bit with some of the things that I'm hearing from Kansas is that, you know, it's painful or it's crippling or it's, it's hindering their pursuit of the American dream. And, and it, it really is just reflective of how out of touch the Biden administration is. Well, speaking of out of touch, I don't know if you saw the interview. She was asked um, whether or not she was seeing inflation uh, at her local grocery store. And she said, no, everything's fine. This woman is worth more than $20 million. I find it very hard to think that she's shopping down at the Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, and, and I just, again, they they don't feel it because they're they're so well off. I mean, it's kind of the, they're making these policy decisions that are affecting everyday Americans. I mean, there's 340 million of us uh, American citizens that are here and, and we've, we've got to, uh, take care of our families and uh, don't don't live the lifestyle of the elite that uh, some of these decision makers in the Biden administration do, and it's uh, uh, it, it truly is a burden on so many people across America. So, so Congressman, you're telling me you don't have like a, a secret, you know, freezer in the back of the house with the uh, high dollar ice cream like Pelosi? No, I don't have one of those, you know, multi-thousand dollar refrigerator freezers uh, like uh, former Speaker Pelosi does and and, uh, stuffed with ice cream. I've got to worry about, you know, how do I get the hamburger so we can make spaghetti for uh, for dinner? Oh, there you go. Got to get that hamburger helper there. All right, uh, Congressman, we really appreciate the great work you're doing. Folks, it's a great column. i got to read it over at nationalreview.com, and we have a direct link over on our live show blog. Congressman, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Todd. I appreciate being able to talk about this. All right, Congressman Ron Estes from good old Wichita, Kansas, KQAM, our great affiliate there, the big talker in uh, in the great state of Kansas.